Hi, welcome to episode 15 of Knittings and Sewings, a podcast about all things multi in the fiber world, including knitting, sewing, weaving, spinning, crochet, and many other things. Many of you first discovered me, or discovered our podcast, on episode 14 because I was speaking quite a bit about the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along for 2023 called Geo Gradient. And for those of you who are new here, I would love to welcome you aboard, uh, as well as those of you, of course, returning. I so appreciate your uh, coming back and spending time with me. But anyway, many of you did come because of the Stephen West Knit Along discussion, and I'm gonna have some more of that today. I will try to put it at the beginning of the podcast each time so that you, those of you who are here just for that can get your Stephen West fix and then go on about other things if that's your primary reason for being here. But I hope you'll watch the whole thing. That'd be great. Today, I want to start off by mentioning again that I had ordered the Stephen West uh, kit directly for the first time from the website. Uh, usually, like in the past, I have assembled my own kit based on buying yarn at my local yarn store and um, or getting stuff from my stash as well. So um, this year, though, I decided to splurge and to get the Life in the Long Grass teal colorway, which is called Stone. And so um, I, the last time that we talked, I had ordered it but had not yet received it. Well, it only took like nine days later to get the kit in the mail. And so I was really excited to receive that. And the first thing let's start with is, um, in just a moment, I'm going to start with showing you that kit. Um, and so we'll do that. But before we do that, I think I will talk to you a little bit about something else that is, you're noticing probably, I'm wearing a 1970s vintage top, vintage blouse, uh, because this particular mystery knit along is gonna be focused, according to Stephen, a lot on a 70s, 1970s inspiration. And you may notice that I am wearing not only this blouse, I have some 1970s earrings, very often we wore hoops, geometric shapes, particularly circles. The choker I'm wearing is also very reminiscent, or it's a little necklace, but many times with the 70s, we would actually wear a choker like right up at the neckline there, right around our neck, close around our neck. So uh, as you notice, I also in the backdrop have a 1970s ripple Afghan in earthy colors of the orange rust browns that was very typical of that time period and another very common thing was granny squares at that time and they've had a resurgence here lately many many people are including me I want to make now a granny square lapkin for myself this winter and um, I will be covering that in future podcasts but I have already started uh, thinking about that and I want a fairly small one but the granny square were very big then and are very big again nowadays. So um, anyway, this backdrop I have on my left, the Lava Lamp, which was, um, it, it gained popularity and actually became, I think, first, first known in popular culture because of the Doctor Who, uh, the BBC original show, Doctor Who. And I watched it here in Kansas City. I'm from Kansas City and I was watching it um, during the uh, 60s and early 70s on uh, PBS is where we got to see it um, here. But at any rate, very 1970s, uh, the kind of things I'm showing you right now. And so that's why I'm talking about it because I'm wearing it because um, I'm gonna do a brief little reminisce here of the 70s because that is another thing that has inspired the Mystery Knit Along. He has said, Stephen West has said, that he ran upon some 1970s vintage wallpaper. And the geometric nature of it and the way the colors were uh, laid out 
in the wallpaper he discovered inspired this particular shawl along, as well as the geometric shapes that were in it. So uh, we will be talking here for just a moment. I want to talk to you about the 1970s. I don't know that Stephen was alive then. I don't think he was because I believe that he was born in the late 80s or early 90s from what I can figure on his age. But um, I did live in the 1970s and it was my favorite time period of my entire life. I will have to say, uh, if I could transport myself back, and as you know, I love science fiction. If I could transport myself back to any time in my life, any decade, it would definitely be the 1970s. And why you may ask, because it was, I was a teenager then, which is a wonderful time to be a teenager, because you're naturally as a teenager a little bit rebellious and exploring your own identity and, and getting to know yourself. And that is what the 70s were all about. It was about people expressing themselves. Even adults, even some older adults, uh, started really uh, expressing their individuality during that time period. It was a time of a lot of major changes in our society. Uh, women were going out to work for the first time, very often out of the home. Um, there were major changes, civil rights, the awareness of you know, an energy crisis, uh, inflation was rampant, and uh, you know, we were becoming aware of, of our diminishing abilities with energy and other things and more aware of the earth and how it did have its limits. So it was a very dynamic period of time. There was a lot of social change going on. And people expressed that kind of uh, exploration and rebelliousness in their clothing, their decor, uh, their attitudes. And it was called the me generation for good reason. But a lot of the changes that were going on were, um, you know, were extreme. And uh, it was a very creative tumultuous and vibrant period. And so um, as a result of that, um, they, it was expressed in the clothing. And so I'm wearing clothing today that kind of reflects that. And I also want to tell you I'm drinking, while we're on the topic, I'm drinking some stash tea, uh, cinnamon apple, uh, chamomile, and it is um, caffeine free. Deep, and I'm dr drinking this in the evening. So it's Nice to have a little decaf. This is very fallish and I'm enjoying the taste of this. Uh, on my nails this evening, I have the uh, OPI color um, feeling Capricorn. And last time I had on the Scorpio, which is my astrological sign, this is my husband's sign. And I thought the green kind of went a little bit with my outfit. So that's another one of those horoscope colors if any of you we were asking about it, would like to check that out. I want to do this little time capsule reminisce uh, because many of the kits that Stephen West had put together were also reminiscent of the earth shades and colors that went along with the 70s. And so um, I want to talk to you again about the 70s, what I remember and what possibly could have inspired this knit along, who knows. Um, the wallpaper that he spoke about, it was often in the earth tones, so the uh, harvest golds, the avocado green, and you'll notice on my side table here, I have an avocado green tablecloth that was my grandmother's, and so that was often decorating homes as well, but the uh, in the wallpaper, it, would, it could match your decor. It could be the harvest gold, the avocado green, the terracotta, which is kind of a rust color, or the brown cocoa color. All of those were reflected uh, in not only the clothing, but also the home decor. And so um, I have a picture uh, that of the home decor. Hopefully Bob will put that up here. And even in the appliances we had, uh, we had the same colors and they would be, you know, even used as your appliances. So you could have a harvest gold or an avocado green stove or refrigerator. You might have avocado green shag carpeting. All of those were fairly 
uh, standard in the decor. And the wallpaper that we had, not everyone had wallpaper, but it was very common. And you would often have geometric shapes in the wallpaper and they could be either some of them had like a metallic little uh, glint to the, to the design or it could even have a velvety texture. But it was very textured and again, we would say nowadays maybe uh, some people might think it looks garish or loud or overboard, but that was the time. Everyone lived big and intensely during that time. It was not a quiet, subtle time or a time of sophistication in the traditional sense. It was, everything was out there and uh, bell bottoms and go-go boots and flower power, uh, women wearing, you know, flower, uh, flower prints, tie-dye. Many times um, these were all reflected. You know, you could have a mini skirt on with some white go-go boots. As far as men's wear, um, Johnny Carson was very popular at that time. He was a late night TV host who was around for at least through the 60s and 70s. I think um, at the beginning of the 60s and late 60s when he started, people would watch Johnny Carson and it was called The Tonight Show. And children like myself, we would sneak out of bed to watch uh, we usually only have one TV set, ours was in the living room, uh, was a black and white TV set when I was young. But then in the 70s, we got color TV. Actually, I think it came out in the late 60s, but in our family, we didn't get it till the early 70s. So, when, boy, when the color TV came out, that was another reason why I think these colors that were so explosive, uh, so many colors combined, and with such a color explosion, so vibrant, that was common. And because of people getting their color TVs, they love to see those color explosions in everything that they watched. What Stephen West is going to do with this 1970s theme uh, and with the geo gradient. So I don't know how heavily it's going to factor in, but I can't wait to see what shape the shawl is going to be, for example. Um, it could be a circular because, you know, the circular, the paisley shape, you know, uh, it could be triangular. I love triangles. I you know, might have something, might have curves like the wallpaper design that he uh, has put up on his website. If you go to his website, you can take a look at that and see some of the ideas. I thought maybe it could be curved or semicircular. Uh, I think it could be anything but square because if you live during the 70s or have heard much about it, you will know that being a square was not the thing you wanted to be. So I would say it could be almost anything. Leave it to your imagination. Uh, anything but square. <laughs> so that's my take on it. And now what I would like to talk about is what I said a moment ago about my reaction to unboxing my own Stephen West box that came from Amsterdam. I'm going to insert a clip here of me opening that box. Today we received an important box in the mail. It is the Stephen and Penelope box for the kit, the MCAL kit. Good boy. He's going to see what we've got here. I'm going to open it right now for the first time. I know I've, I've ordered. Well, it may not be the right way to open it. Uh, here we go. It's this way, I think. Oh, here we go. Maybe. Here we go. Okay, finally. You can tell I... I haven't opened it because I don't know how to open it. All right, it's the MCAL in the stone colorway. I'm gonna make sure I don't cut anything important here. Oh, I'm just gonna lift it because I don't want to just cut anything. And I'm gonna. First of all, I got the. 
bag I was hoping for. I wanted this color. Oh my gosh, it's like a pretty rust, you know, fall color with the beautiful little yellow kind of uh, signature thing of his. And now the yarn. This is Life in the Long Grass. And you can maybe come up closer, Bob, because this is the colors that we have gotten is the stone. And I'm going to pull up, pull them up a little bit closer. Okay. There we go. Okay, I'm going to show you a close-up of each color. Color A is stone, and it does have good. It has a lot of little speckles in it. I was afraid it would be just pure white, but it isn't. It has a lot of pretty little speckles. Then the next color is this, which is the Cool Dawn. It's kind of a, a very light teal kind of color. Whoops, that's the other. The teal. This one is the Sephira. Sephiria, which is the true beautiful teal. And finally, we have the Emerald Eve, which is definitely a very dark green. Now in person, or these are much, I can see the color variations much better than I could on the screen. And I like what I see. I have a mixture of, this is more, not only white, but it has some speckling in it, heavy speckling, it looks like. And then uh, we have the, this is a more, truly a bluish green, very light bluish green. Pure, pure, beautiful teal, one of the most beautiful teals I've seen. And then this is definitely a dark green. So I think this will make a very interesting shawl. I'm very, very excited. And one more thing I will show real quick is in the bag, we're supposed to have gotten... Put that drop. In the bag, we got a few little extras and... There were some little stamps or little stickers. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with those yet. Maybe I will put them on a notebook, project notebook or something. And then we have a little uh, gauge because we're going to definitely needle gauge. And finally, this is the little sticker, the little label that you can, what is this, that you can sew on. Your, here we go, your MCAL label for 2023, West Knits label. So, and then this is just plain West Knits. So we got those. And so this, I will be able to actually sew onto my shawl once it's finished. I'm really excited. I like what I got. It's just perfect. I'm really, really excited to get started on swatching. I'm going to be winding these up tonight and getting started on swatching as soon as possible. So there you can see my initial excitement. I was really thrilled to get it. I even got the bag color I wanted, that rust color, that terracotta or rust with the uh, with that chartreuse color with it. That was the bag color I would have selected if I'd been able to choose my own color. He had three possibilities. Um, so the tote bag even was what I had in mind. But the colors themselves, as I started to look at them more closely, they did not speak to me in the way that I hoped. Um, as I talked just a few moments ago about the vibrancy of the 70s, for me, I somehow, and I always love really vibrant jewel tones and bright, rich colors, and uh, that's part of one of the things I enjoy about spinning as well as knitting and crocheting, is I like the kind of more vivid colors. And so um, it was a little bit of a disappointment for when I opened the box and later started caking up the yarn, the white color that was stone had a lot of the gray flecks in it that to me just looked a little drab. And then I started looking at all four of the colors and they almost, they all looked more drab than what I pictured. I'm sure they're very sophisticated and, and they're pretty. And um, I'm going to show you here, hopefully Bob can put up a little snapshot of what my swatch looked like. Um, but the swatch, once I did it and started working with the colors, I just wasn't 
really as excited as I hoped to be. I felt a little, kind of a letdown a little bit. And I started trying to figure out why. I do think it's mainly because of that whitish color having the gray instead of blues. I was hoping that blue splatters at go along with the rest of the color scheme, either teal or blue, or even green, but the way that they were just this gray and everything looked drab kind of made me think, eh, this isn't what I had in mind. So um, because of that, uh, I decided this weekend when we were in St. Louis, I decided to go to Seven Sisters, a new yarn shop, new to me, uh, not new, but new to me, a yarn shop to try to see if I could find a couple of other color inspirations to jazz up this, <laughs> this kind of um, kit that I purchased. So I was going to replace a couple of the colors. And so I'm going to insert now that footage of me taking a look at the possibilities. And here we go. This morning, I am contemplating my choices uh, for the uh, MCAL, for the GeoGradient MCAL starting on October 5th. And I had originally, um, a few minutes ago, shown you our original choices here. This is the Stone Life in the Long Grass Stone Colorway Kit. And I made a sample, which is right here. This is color A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and D. However, I wasn't totally sold on this particular uh, kit, and it wasn't really speaking to me because mainly of this whitish color having gray rather than blue. It seems to have a lot of gray speckles. So I was a little concerned about that, and I was a little concerned that the teal might be a little too light a teal. Uh, wasn't sure about that. So I went to, while well, in St. Louis here, where I'm at right now, I went to the Southern Sisters Yarn Shop and found a couple of other options. If I add this in to in place of the white with the gray, that's a possibility. And another possibility is to substitute this green, if I don't want the evergreen, I could put in a, that indigo blue. That's another option. And so these are a couple of things I'm thinking about. Or I could go with just this, like just exchanging out this. Let me know what your thoughts are. Um, these are all kind of in, right now, in the tealish family. But I'm just thinking that the white with the gray particularly might be a little light. So let me know. There's one more possibility I could do. One more thing is if I don't keep that this in, I could add this gold to do a different kind of pop. And so that is another option. Let me know what you think. Is this going to be too bland and boring? Or should I mix it up by adding in these two new options? Okay, so what did you think? <laughs> Did you like any particular, uh, the combination, seeing the added couple of colors that I added? What do you think? Um, do you think I should stick with my original kit, or should I consider uh, supplementing them with the new yarn? I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. I may be continuing to think about it for the next couple of weeks until we start the knit along. I'm not sure. One part of me thinks I should just go with what I purchased, but another part of me feels like, you know, that's just, am I going to be bored working with those colors, and would I wear those if I feel it's too drab? I don't know. But now we're going to move on to the next segment. I'm going to talk about what I've been working on to try to finish up before we start the big mystery, Mr. Shalom one. Um, I've been working on a pair of Stephen West Painting Bricks socks. And right now I've finished the one, which you see here. And this is Emma's sock yarn. It's her uh, Practically Perfect sock base. And the color in the brown, the aubergine color, 
brownie purple is called Twilight. And the other colors that are mixed into the sock are other scraps that I have had left from the socks I've been making over 2022 and 2023, uh, mainly 2022. So these are just leftover little bits and bobs. And um, I am now about on the second sock, I've started the cuff and I'm about three or four sock, I mean, uh, color repeats down. So I still have about most of the sock left to go. But I'm hoping by the end of September or early October, I will be finished with the second sock and will be able to show you those when I get to it. But it's coming right along and these are really fun absorbing socks that are kind of like popcorn knitting. They're really fun to work with and I really hope to be done shortly. But I wanted to just show you the one sock I've completed that I really do like it. And then while we're talking about socks and Stephen West socks to boot, my friend Judy, I cannot claim credit for this. I wish I could. But these are the contrast blast socks that my friend Judy has finished. She started these in July when he did the contrast blast knit along. And I was with her the day she picked out the Emma's yarn for this. I believe the purple color is called Jelly and the green is Pickle. But she had the ingenious um, courage to start the one sock with the purple and go through that sock and then the second sock, the green. And I just think that is just so clever and creative and cute. These are darling. They're one of my... I mean, now I want to make these socks. At first, I wasn't too sure about it. When she first started making them, I was thinking, oh, as I watched each clue unfold as she did them, I thought, I don't know if I'm going to like those or not. But when she finished these, and especially her color choices, just made these pop. And speaking of the color of these, I think these are very reminiscent of the 1970s. I think the green and purple together is very much what you would have seen in the 1970s. So I think she's gonna wear these and have a lot of fun wearing them this winter. So Judy, you did a phenomenal job and you have inspired me once again. You always inspire me with your knitting and crochet. So go Judy. <laughs> I have one more project I want to show you before we end today. I had been working on this last time in episode 14 this is the Killer Queen Shawl by Bagoday Crochet. It is not yet finished. Oops, I've got an end drag in here. Um, I am on like 12 clusters on each side, and I think I have to get to, oh gosh, probably 16 or 17 on each side before it's finished. So it's almost finished. But it goes, as you can see, from the yellow. Uh, it's This is a continuous strand, and I have done two threads together in order to get the weight I want, which is a little thicker. I want this to be a nice, warm uh, fall and winter shawl. So um, the striping is automatic with this. I'm not doing the color gradation. It's doing it with the hobby yarn I'm using. And this is um, Cotton King Deluxe Shine in color number eight, which uh, at the end here we'll have, it's going from the yellow to orange then fuchsia, and finally it will end with purple on the outer edge once I get to that. So I still have a little bit more to go, and I hope to finish this either by the end of this month or early October again before we start on the new mystery shawl. And that is about it, folks. That is all I have to share today. It's enough, right? Um, but I wanted to thank you once again for joining me, and I hope that you'll come back again for episode 16 next time. Um, I will try in the future episodes, whenever I'm talking about Stephen West's New Mystery Knit Along, I will try to put that material up at the beginning of the episode, and I will put timestamps on, so that if you would like to go right directly to that Stephen West material, you can get right to it at the beginning. And I will put the timestamps up, but... Um, that is all I have to share for this time, but I want to end, as I always do, by saying, love what you're making and wear what you make. Bye, everybody. <laughs>